Hello, and welcome to Crime Talk. Today we are discussing Eaton Pats. We're apologizing if either of us pronounced the name wrong. I'm assuming it's like Ethan, so I'm saying Eaton. He was one of the first children to be pictured on a milk carton, and his disappearance was significant to children decades after him. So Eaton Khalil? Khalil? Pats was born October 9, 1972, in Manhattan, New York, in the United States. He was born to Stanley and Julie Pats. Eaton Pats was six years old on May 25, 1979, when he disappeared on his way to his school bus in Soho neighborhood of Lower Manhattan. It was his first time being allowed to walk alone. On the morning of May 25, 1979, Eaton left his Soho apartment at 113 Prince Street by himself for the first time, planning to walk the two blocks to board a school bus at West Broadway and Prince Street. He never got on the bus. At school, Eaton's teacher noticed his absence, but did not report it to the principal. When Eaton did not return home from school, his mother, Julie, called the police. At first, detectives considered the parents to be possible suspects, but quickly determined that they had no involvement. An intense search began that evening, using nearly 100 police officers and a team of bloodhounds. The search continued for weeks. Neighbors and police canvassed the city and placed missing child posters featuring Etten, but this resulted in very few leads. Etten's father, Stanley, was a professional photographer and had, had a collection of photographs <laughs> he had taken of his son. His picture was projected on screens in Times Square. Wow, so the person had an eight-hour head start. Eight-hour head start, yeah. On the kidnapping. But so if the teacher would have just been like to the principal, hey, he's not here, called the parents or something. So you know how nowadays they call the parents. They call the parents to make sure. I wonder if that did they do that back in 1972? I wonder. That's a long time. I mean, they did it when my brother was in school. (laughs) That's not that long ago, though. My brother was 20 years ago. My brother's not that old. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, it is. Damn, he is that old. Sorry. Eaton was one of the first children to be pictured on a milk carton. The campaign started in the 1980s, and in 1983, President Ronald Reagan designated May 25th, the anniversary of Eaton's disappearance, as National Missing Children's Day in the United States. Assistant United States Attorney Stuart R. Graboy received the case in 1985 and identified Jose Ramo- Romeos, pronouncing that wrong probably, as convicted a sexual abuser who had been a friend of Eaton's babysitter as a primary suspect. In 1982, multiple boys had accused Ramos of trying to lure them to a drain pipe in the area Ramos was living. When police searched the drain pipe, they found photographs of Ramos and young boys who resembled Eaton. Gribois eventually found out that Ramos had been in custody in Pennsylvania in connection with an unrelated child molestation case in the 1990s. Grabois was deputized as Deputy State Attorney General in Pennsylvania to help prosecute a case against Ramos for sexually abusing children and to obtain further information about Eaton's case. When Grabois first questioned Ramos, he stated that on the day Eaton disappeared, he had taken a young boy back to his apartment to rape him. Ramos said that he was 90% sure it was the boy whom he later saw on television. However, Ramos did not use Eaton's name, and he claimed that he had, and I quote, put the boy on a subway. In 1991, while Ramos was incarcerated, a jailhouse informant told Grabois and an FBI agent, Mary Galligan, that Ramos had told him he knew what had happened to Eaton. Ramos even drew a map of Eaton's school bus route indicating that he knew that Eaton's stop, bus stop was the third one on the route. Eaton's body was never found. He was declared legally dead on June 19, 2001. Stan and Julie Patz pursued and won a civil case against Ramos in 2004. He was rewarded a sum of $2 million, which they never collected. Ramos has never been crimi- criminally prosecuted for the murder of Eaton. Every year on Eaton's birthday and the anniversary of his disappearance, Stan sent Ramos a copy of his son's missing child poster and on the back was written the same message. I quote, what did you do to my little boy? End quote. Wow, it, wow, it's tough stuff. 
Ramos had denied that he killed Eaton. Ramos served 20-year prison sentence in the state correctional institution in Dallas, Pennsylvania for child molestation. He was released on November 7, 2002. Soon after his release, he was arrested on Megan's Law violation. If you're wondering what Megan's Law is, it's a federal law where information of registered sex offenders is made public for anyone to access. Attorney Cyrus Vance Jr. officially reopened the case on May 25, 2010. April 19, 2012, the FBI and the NYPD investigators began excavating the Soho basement of 127B Prince Street near the Pats' home. This residence had been newly refurbished shortly after Eaton's disappearance. In 1979, in the basement had been the workshop and the storage space of a handyman. After a four-day search, investigators announced that there was, and I quote, nothing conclusive found, end quote. On May 24, 2012, New York Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly announced that a man was in custody who implicated himself in Eaton's disappearance. 51-year-old Pedro Hernandez of Maple Shade, New Jersey, he confessed to strangling the child. He stated in his written confession, I'm sorry I shook him. It said, and I quote, I'm sorry I shook him. I don't know if that was a typer on the website that I was looking at, but it said shook. Eaton had a dollar and had told his parents he planned to buy a soda to drink with his lunch. At the time, Eaton's disappearance, Hernandez was an 18-year-old convenience store worker in the neighborhood bodega. Hernandez said that he later threw Eaton's remains into the garbage. Hernandez was charged with second-degree murder. According to New York Times report from May 27, 2012, the police at the time had no physical evidence to corroborate his confession. In 2012, a man from New Jersey, Jose Lopez, reached out to investigators. Jose is married to Nina Hernandez, Pedro's sister, okay. who is also a leader of the charismatic Christianity group of St. Anthony of Padua, a Roman Catholic church in Camden, New Jersey. She stated that Pedro may have publicly confessed in the presence of fellow parishioners in the early 1980s to murder Eaton. November 14, 2012, Pedro was indicted by a grand jury on charges of second-degree murder and first-degree kidnapping. His lawyer stated that he was diagnosed with schizotypical personality disorder, which included hallucinations. His lawyer also went on to say that his client has low intelligence, quote, IQ of around 70. He said, and I quote, at the border of intellectual disability. December 12th, 2012, Pedro Hernandez pleaded not guilty of two counts of murder and one count of kidnapping in a New York court. As of 2013, Harvey Fishbien, Pedro's legal aide, filled a motion to dismiss a case citing that Hernandez's, and I quote, confession is one of the nation's most notorious child disappearances was false, peppered with questionable claims and made after several hours of police questionings, end quote. The following month, New York Supreme Court Justice Maxwell Wiley ruled that the evidence was, and I quote, legally sufficient to support the charges, end quote. So the case is able to move forward. He has also ordered a hearing to determine whether the defendant's statements could be used at trial. September 2014, Hernandez had a hearing about whether his statements made prior to the police giving him his Miranda rights were legally admissible at trial. So the whole hearing was mostly about whether or not he stood competent to waive his Miranda rights. The question of the statement's truthfulness will be, was to be discussed in the trial, which began January 5th, 2015. So... Legally admissible means capable of being allowed. So that means, like, he was able to waive his own Miranda rights. May 2015, I'm going to put a disclaimer, there's going to be a lot of dates thrown at you right now, but I have it hopefully as organized as it possibly can be. May 2015, the case resulted in a mistrial due to a hung jury, which was deadlocked 11 against 1 for conviction. October 19th, 2016, in a New York City court, a retrial began. February of 2017, the jury deliberates. February 14, 2017, Pedro Hernandez was found guilty of kidnapping and felony murder. Sentencing was scheduled for February 28th, with Hernandez was facing 25 years to life in prison. However, Hernandez's attorney were granted a delay so as to be able to challenge a verdict and no new sentencing date was set. On April 18th, 2017, Pedro Hernandez was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole after serving at least 25 years. So Eaton's body was never found, but it was said that Pedro Hernandez stated that he threw it in the garbage. To add a little bit of 
light at the end of this horrific tunnel. His disappearance had a huge effect on the world and the world as it is today. So to know that his life still did mean a lot, his disappearance led to the National Missing Children's Day to raise awareness of missing children in the United States. In 2001, the tribute to Ethan, Eaton had spread worldwide. The International Center for Missing and Exploited Children, also known as the ICMEC, coordinates the Help Bring Them Home campaign in 22 countries in conjunction with International Missing Children's Day. Eaton's disappearance has been credited with creating greater attention to missing children, resulting in changes such as less children being allowed to walk alone, photos of missing children being printed on milk cartons, and promotion of the, word, the words stranger danger. The idea that all adults not known to the child must be regarded as potential sources of danger. And finally, his disappearance helped launch missing children movement, which included a new leg legislation and new methods for tracking down missing children. So that is Eaton Pats. That is the story of the first missing child on a milk carton. Super interesting, but yeah, he... He changed at least, yeah. everything. Unfortunately, his death ended up meaning a significant amount for children today.